All right. Hello, hello. Hopefully you can hear me. And we are live. Let's just give it a second. While I gather my supplies, we are painting gnomes today. And there we go. The session is up. There's always a little bit of a delay, so I apologize for what I am seeing and what you are all seeing. Okay, I'm just making sure I have the chat open so I can see if anybody has comments along the way. And I see a bunch of people are joining. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to feel free to drop a comment in the chat to say hello, introduce yourself, let me know if you can't hear me or I'm too loud or anything like that or you can't see something. I try to keep my eye on all of the different cameras and <laughs> chat and things that are going on, but I'm here solo. All right. So I'm so excited to paint with y'all today. I'm Shana Searcy, and here we are with a fun little Santa Gnome project. Um, I had some odd shaped leftover pieces of um, paper, watercolor paper, and this is some high... You don't have to paint on this high quality, but I had this high quality, super thick Arsh watercolor paper and I wanted to paint something on it. And I was like, it's a really odd size that I cut off of um, a commission that I'm doing. And I was like, well, what can I paint on it? Well, how about gnomes? Because everybody loves gnomes. I love gnomes. I paint gnomes a lot during this time of year for various projects. Happy Friday all. I see you guys all chiming in in the comments. Thank you so much. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here with you. So I'm gonna get started and I get a lot of requests from folks who want me to draw things first and then paint them. Absolutely, I totally get it. Some things are more complicated and could be their own video by themselves for drawing. Some things I have as outlines in my studio crew. Um, and I, you know, I do that purposefully because um, I want you to join the studio crew, but the outlines are in there and they're more complicated pieces that really you need an outline or a whole dedicated video um, for drawing that piece. But gnomes are really easy and I can definitely do those uh, for you and you can definitely learn how to draw a gnome and paint a gnome all in one video. So let's get started with that. Let me just see who is here in the chat. Uh, oh, so many people. Wonderful. I've got folks from, oh, Scotland. Hello from Scotland. My family was in Scotland this summer. I was not, unfortunately, but my son and husband were. Um, hello. Happy Friday. Susan from Nashville. Lovely to see everyone. Allison, Bailey, Karen, uh, and silly Susie. I love it. All right. So welcome, welcome. And again, if you are here and want to drop a hello in the chat or ask a question, I will do my best to keep my eye on that. All right. So we're painting gnomes. We're drawing gnomes. I have a piece, uh, a long piece of, this is Arsh 300 pound cold press. You do not need 300 pound, but I just happen to have that. I wanted to paint something on it. I actually turned this one into a door hanger so I can put it on. I have these doors with little knobs. Put that up there for a decoration. I'm going to start by drawing and then I have my kneaded eraser and my pencil for that part of the process. And then when I start painting, I have my core paints here with me. I use Core Q-O-R by Golden, um, a slightly lesser known brand or is popular, but I love them. Um, they're getting more and more popular. They're kind of a new kid on the block, relatively speaking. And then for brushes, I have um, some Princeton Select brushes here that I'm gonna use, a size four. And um, I also have a Velvet Touch brush here that I might use a size 10. But I just have like all my brushes sitting here in front of me, so I might grab something else. I will let you know. Okay, so we are going to start with drawing our, of our gnome. So I'm going to start with my pencil and I always start with the nose right in the middle of the whole thing and I draw basically a half of a C shape here and I hope you can see that. I'll draw a little darker than I normally do just so you can see on the camera and 
after I've drawn my C, you know, my half of a C shape here, see it looks like a C that way, um, I am going to then start to build the hat and I build up and then I build down. So sideways C shape for the nose. The hat you can see here is basically a really big C shape or an upside down U shape, whatever you want to call it, um, in the other direction but it comes right across the nose. So I usually put this line in first and then I start to curve down and I start to curve down this way. And I want the ends to be rounded, not pointed. You could make them pointed. And so I don't come right up like this. I do a little curve up and a little curve up this way. And you can build on depending on the pattern or design you're going to do. I'm going to build on my little brim right here. And I see a lot of comments in or a lot of messages in the comments. I'm going to check in just a minute, but I actually have to concentrate a little bit when I draw uh, or I make a mistake and then all of a sudden, you know, everything is off the rails. So we're going to then build upwards. The hat is just a big kind of wonky triangle. It's not like perfect. It's going to come right to here and be cut off at the top. And then, so I'm not giving it any big curves or anything or, or bends in it, just a little bit of a, a rounded kind of floppy edge, the edges of it, just so it looks like fabric that it's not perfectly straight. All right, so now that's done. And now we're gonna add just some lines up here. Most of this will be done in paint for the little pom-pom. It's like a nice thick one. And then for our beard, we're gonna come down here. I'm gonna come down the sides and we're gonna kind of go out all the way down. And this is a tall gnome. If you can see, these guys look tall. They don't have, we're not gonna see any of the body I normally have bodies that you can see, or at least arms or things sticking out. His whole beard is going to cover up anything behind it. And we're going to come all the way down. I'm just flicking in and out. You can bring some of those whiskers right up. A lot of this, again, is going to be painted in. I'm just drawing in a few lines to give me some guidelines. All right, let me check the comments here and see what people are saying. From Scotland, hello from PA, so glad to see you here. Sandra, uh, Bailey. Oh, is in Edinburgh, uh, also in Scotland, wonderful. It must be a, like a downtime in Scotland right now. Um, Silly Susie, great to see you. Oh, from the Nether, I'm going back to the Netherlands soon, currently in Hungary. So we are, we are rocking the international edition of this uh, channel right now, and I absolutely love it. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, sorry, I'm drinking chai right now. All right, so we have our beard, we have our hat, we have our nose, and now let's put in the little feet are gonna go right down here at the bottom. It's just a flat shape with a little, another U or C shape at the top of that. It's all basic shapes. That's all drawing is. It's just finding the basic shapes and things and putting them all together, okay? And then the legs, everything is hidden behind this beard. So this is gonna be all in shadow. You can't see any of it. It's down below, so. I'm just gonna put in two little marks here for highlights on the shoes, just to remember not to paint that in. And then in the top, you see a lot going on up here. I'm not gonna be drawing any of that in for the most part, other than blocking out the sections for the stripes. So we have this section here for the top of the hat. I'm gonna go up a little ways and I'm making kind of big, instead of even patterned stripes or anything like that, I'm making sections that will then paint patterns into. So this one's gonna be red with white details. This little section here is gonna be white with red details. The opposite here. And then I'll put like one more up here. So you just gotta keep track of that when you start painting. So this will be red, white, red, white, red. And they're all slightly varied sizes. 
Welcome, Sandra, your first time here. Thank you for joining us. And also, Judy, your first time here and watching from Alaska. I love it. All right. So now it's time to start painting. That's all there is for drawing. I'm just changing this a little bit here. I am using a kneaded eraser. Everybody knows what a kneaded eraser is, right? I hope you do. If you don't and you're in the watercolor world, go get yourself a kneaded eraser. It will change your life. Um, it helps you not damage your watercolor paper when you do have to erase. It doesn't leave any little crumbs on your paper that you have to get rid of after you have er erased. So highly, highly recommend. There we go. Okay, so let's get painting. We're gonna start with the hat and our most dramatic color first. So I'm gonna pick up my Velvet Touch size 10 brush. I have my cup of water here. I'm gonna move my brushes out of the way. And then I have a really messy palette with lots going on. So I'm going to have to clean off the space. Now, right before I started, I was like, do I have everything? Am I sure? And I was like, yes, I have everything I could possibly need. Now I'm realizing I don't have any paper towels to clean off my palette, but I have this reusable cloth. So I will use that today. Mary, welcome. Your first time from Massachusetts. So over in the Northeast in my neck of the woods and Dancing Nana, I love that name from Cincinnati. Thanks so much for joining us. You guys are awesome. All right, so let's start with the hat. So this is, you're gonna have a lot going on with details here. So you really don't have to get too caught up in the hat and any shading. We have no major curves or bends or anything or folds in the hat. So as long as there's some, a little bit of dimensionality to it, slightly varied, maybe some slightly darker along the edges than in the middle, that's fine. But you're going to be covering it up with so much detail that it's not going to really matter. I am using alizarin crimson, this beautiful rich color. I'm making a lot of it because I will need a lot. I have thirsty paper too. So my paper, again, is that 300 pound arch paper. You don't need that. It's just what I had. I had some scraps from really good paper that I didn't want to waste. Um, so please feel free. 140 pound cold press, perfectly fine. Um, or 90 pound, even if you have that, just tape it down. I'm not taping mine down because again, it's like cardboard. I don't need to tape it down. All right, so we're just gonna start the edges. And basically I'm gonna get some nice crisp edges to the outside here. Add some water to my brush. Now that, and I think I said this was Arsh, but it's actually Fabriano, I just realized. As soon as I started painting, those two papers behave slightly differently. And if you paint on them a lot, you will be able to tell the difference. If you don't, you might not. But this is Fabriano. Artistico, but still 300 pound cold press. And you can see I am not being super, super careful with like trying to make like a perfect gradient or anything like that. I am just going to lift a little bit of the color out of the middle, kind of push some to the edge a little bit. Just want a slight variation in color in the hat to make it look like it has slightly lighter, slightly darker areas. It looks like fabric. It's not flat. And that's all I'm going to do and say about that. And then we're going to skip that section. So that's going to be white. And I'm going to add red here. If you need to turn your paper or paint from the top down so you're not running your hand through your gnome, that would be great as well. I am just gonna be very, very careful. There we go. And if 
if you're watching this live and you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. Happy to answer those. But if you're not watching it live and you have questions and you put them in the comment, comment section, I most likely will still answer them via a comment. I just won't be answering them live in the video. So rinsing off my brush and pulling out just a little bit of color in this middle section on here. Pull out a little there. All right, now we're just gonna let that dry and we're gonna move on to another section. So while that's drying, we'll work down here and then we'll kind of jump back and forth. So that way we don't have to take any breaks to like leave and go away and come back and wait for things to dry. Okay, beard time. So the beard often uh, makes people nervous because it is very delicate, so it's a very, very light gray, and it actually, as we build layers, it gets quite dark in some areas. So you can see here in this one, and in this one, there are some dark areas, but it still translates as a gray, a light gray or a white beard, because um, we're painting in the shadows, but not the... But, and we're leaving the paper for the white of the beard. So we're not painting everything. You don't need to put brush strokes on every little bit of the beard, just in the areas to communicate some shadows. All right, I'm gonna switch brushes, I think. Now, how many of you out there, if you paint, do you switch brushes a lot? Do you feel like you need a lot of different brushes or do you do most of your painting with one brush? I definitely do a lot of my painting with one or two brushes. Hello from the Netherlands, Sandra. She says she loves these gnomes and she is inspired to paint them. I love that too. I'm actually gonna pick up this size four. These are some of my student brushes that I just have laying around. I'm just seeing which ones are the best. <laughs> All my brushes are out, like my brushes that I use pretty much daily are out with my commission on the table right now. Okay, so this one's a good one, size four. I'm gonna be using Payne's Gray. And I have red seeping into this palette over here. So I pulled out Payne's Gray and you can see it's really light. I only pulled out a little bit of it. And I'm gonna add lots of water. And when you're working with a really light color, you do wanna swatch it out before you put it to your paper. I'm gonna go on the back of this. Um, just to make sure that that is the actual color you want. Is that light enough? Is it still too dark? Do you have to lighten it up? anymore so you can always go darker you can always add layers but you can't go lighter so that was good for me I added a little bit more water I'm gonna leave a bunch of these pencil lines in here just as part of the process I'm gonna be building on top of them but the first thing I'm gonna do is create kind of a shadow around the nose and when you're doing this, when you first start and the nose isn't painted in yet, it looks kind of weird. It looks like a ghost gnome because, I don't know, once you put that the warmth of that nose in there, even though it's a very subtle color, it just brings everything together. So you can see it kind of went around the whole area, leaving the edges jagged. But knowing the nose is going to cast a shadow, the hat is going to cast a shadow, and none of this is going to be pure white. We'll leave that for further down. And now I'm just going to start bringing this color down. And you can see I don't just do standalone lines all by themselves. Okay, I'm, I'm connecting things. They're slightly wider at the top. They get narrower as they go down. I'm following the shape of the beard so it's flaring out this way. So all of my lines that are in this, my light gray lines, all flow in those same directions. If I put something, everything's supposed to be going this way, and I put something going the opposite way across in that section, it is going to be very jarring for the viewer. It's going to look off. 
unless you're trying to communicate a huge like cowlick in someone's beard, um, that that's not normally how hair grows. So you can see this looks very, even though I put a lot of paint on here, there are a lot of sections, it's very light and they are very subtle, like thin lines towards the bottom. Now we're gonna put darker, um, more contrasty lines in a little bit, but we're gonna let these dry. But I did leave white sections all between these areas. I'm gonna darken up my paints gray just a little bit. And I'm gonna come back up under the nose. This is still gonna be wet. So I'm just gonna darken that section right around the nose just a little bit. And then pull out a few of those areas. So this is a little drier over here. So I have the control to be able to pull out a few. There we go. Great, so now we're starting to create a little more contrast and depth. I'm gonna leave that alone and we're gonna pop back up. Um, actually, I'm gonna go down to the shoes and then we'll pop back up to the hat, work on that, come back into the nose and finish with the beard. Sound good? Good, excellent. Hello, Marsha, Merry Christmas from Virginia Beach. Ooh, is it warm down there? I know it still gets cooler in Virginia this time of year, but it is cold up here in the Northeast. Okay, so let's, um, let's do the shoes. You can do them any color you want. I did these red, these black. I'm going to do them this reddish maroon color. So I'm gonna take some of my red and mix it with Payne's Gray. You don't need a whole lot of colors for this one. And then I'm gonna paint these little maroon shoes. So they're not quite as bright as the hat, but they're also not as dull and kind of lifeless as just flat black. And you can see I'm just leaving that little highlight in there. And we can put a shadow in underneath in a little bit. All right, moving on. Things are drying quickly on my paper because again, I have really thirsty paper that absorbs a lot of the water. Things dry out nicely if they're not super, super wet. All right, let's do the pom-pom here while we continue to let this dry a little bit more before we retackle that. Pom-pom, same thing as the beard. It's going to be darkest and most concentrated towards the bottom. So I'm gonna put in that dark color. I'm just gonna clean off my brush. And I can see some of the red is actually bleeding into the pom-pom. I'm not gonna sweat it. But if I wasn't doing this live, I would just let it dry a little bit longer. I'm just using the very tip of my brush to kind of pull up some of that color and I'll put in some, just a few kind of slightly darker areas towards the top. But sometimes on these things, less is more. I'll put in one or two darker areas after that's dry. Okay, let's go back down to this white part of the hat. So even though it's white, it does need some color to it to, you can see on both of these, to show that it has shape and form and it has a bit of a shadow. So right along the bottom, I'm gonna use some of that Payne's Gray. And you can tint your Payne's Gray ever so slightly, like with a little tiny bit of red or a little tiny bit of blue to give it a cast or a, a color, a tone to it. Payne's Gray, a lot of them in the different brands already has kind of a bluish tone. And then I'm just using water and creating basically a gradient wash. And I'm gonna come back in while that's wet 
a little bit more. Let's add some more water. Don't forget, you can swatch if you're not sure if this is dark enough or not. And I'm gonna come in with a slightly darker. So this is already wet, so I know it's not gonna make a hard line putting that in there. So I put that in and it's bleeding and blending out all on its own. It doesn't really need my help. And if you wanna go even a little darker, can add in a little bit more. There we go. So we have a nice gradient wash there. Um, and you don't have to do as much work as you think you do. If you're doing wet on wet, sometimes you just need to help it along a little bit, but you don't actually have to paint in most of it. Okay, so that definitely has to dry before we get into the nose. Let's start working on some another layer of the beard and then details up here we can do the red details and we'll do white details last because we're going to use dr Paige martin's bleed proof white for the white details all right so i'm gonna go back to my paints gray i want something slightly darker than what's already here so again don't be afraid to swatch that out so you can see here is are my originals. This is really the original color. This is slightly darker, but still not very, very dark. And I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm gonna go back in a little bit to these areas, but really I'm adding in darker details. So not every single line I already put in is going to get another layer on it. You want some of those lighter colors you already put down, that lighter value to be able to stand on its own. These are just additional darker, more recessed fine lines that add depth and dimension. Okay, but we don't have to repaint over everything we've already painted. And that's what a lot of people struggle with. They want, they want to paint everything, especially on white objects. go okay down here at the bottom I'm actually going to put in a bunch of gray because this is kind of all in shadow you can't really see under the beard here I'm going to pick up even darker color and go kind of like right along the edge you can see like a curtain and then a few areas for these really dark colors. And now I'm not gonna leave it like that. Those are very obvious. I'm gonna take some water and blend them out. So there's no exact mathematical placement of all of these darker lines. You kind of have to figure it out and not go overboard and not do too few, but take a pause every once in a while. So there's a lot of really dark, heavy lines going on here. So I'm gonna blend some of those out. I'm gonna step back and let it dry a little bit for a second and kind of assess like where do I need a darker, more dramatic line. Just putting some darker shadow kind of under the hat here. And then over here, I feel like it's very light, but I'm gonna put in very, very light, thin lines. With just the tip of my brush, I'm going to let things kind of trail off. And it's very easy to get carried away and to keep going and going. I'm just about done here. I'm going to let everything dry. Once I put in my nose, I will decide whether or not I need to put any last minute details in there. All right, so we're going to let all that dry. Doesn't he look like a ghost gnome? He's like devoid of all color. And again, just putting in this little pink nose 
pinkish brownish warm toned color nose is going to make all of the difference all right so let's get that in there i'm so sorry that i'm like sipping in your ear but if i don't have a little sip of something i might start coughing it's very dry this time of year so i'm just going to clean this section up a little bit here So I can use this. I need a very light pink color. We're going to start with alizarin crimson. And I'm going to go around the edges. Again, you want to make sure whatever's touching the nose, the brim of the hat or the lower part of the beard is dry. And I'm going around and I'm leaving kind of the inside here white and I'm going to take my brush, rinse it off and with just water kind of move around what's on there. I'm going to leave a little bit of a highlight at the top. The part just under the brim is in shadow, but like this part is sticking out a little. So I'm going to leave that a little bit. Um, I'm going to leave that unpainted. So very white. Now it looks very plain right now, very flat, very light. We're gonna continue to add color. So you can do this a lot of ways. You wanna to get to a warmer brown tone. Today I am going to actually use, I'm gonna show you some complementary color mixing. If you are brand new to me, you might not have seen any of the complementary color, complementary color mixing videos, but complementary color mixing is invaluable and can really um, change the game for you. So let me clean out this little section of my palette. I'm gonna move this up. You're gonna see I have, a, I have green in this other section down here. Red and green are complementary colors. And red and green, especially alizarin crimson and this sap green, make a beautiful brown color. All right, so I'm gonna clean that off. I have a little purple there. All right, so I'm gonna take some alizarin crimson and then I'm just gonna take some of this green and add it. And you can see I'm gonna get a beautiful brown color. If you want it to be more of a reddish brown, you add more alizarin crimson. If you want it to be a cooler, more greenish brown, you add more green. So I use sap green, which looks like it did have a little Payne's gray in it, but sap green with alizarin crimson to get this brown. I'm gonna go a little more on the red side. And then if it, if it needs like another dimension to it, like it's just not quite right for you, you could always add a little yellow as well too. Oh, I just added a lot of yellow to warm that up without it being too red. Okay, so we're gonna stick with this lovely color here. It's like this very warm kind of brown. I'm gonna lighten it up with water. So I'm gonna increase or decrease, lighten the value. And then I'm gonna start to apply this over this pinky color. And then I'm gonna, again, I have a clean brush. I'm gonna start blending it out towards that highlight area. And you can see how that is really starting to bring it together. And with the nose, the best part is just really working on the edge to push that deeper and deeper into a darker color. And when you do this wet on wet, when it's slightly wet, you get these nice soft transitions, but you get this nice, also dark color right on the edge, which is what you want. That contrast really makes the nose look much rounder. Okay. All right, so you can let it dry and put on more layers. I'm gonna leave it for now, just for the sake of time actually just taking some of it and pulling it out for little strands of the beard that have a slight tint to them. Okay, so let's work on the details of the hat. 
I'm gonna take a little bit of this Payne's Gray, actually. I'm gonna go back in here. Create some darker shadows in this super shadowy area. I know I'm jumping around now. But we're, we are, we're going to the hat, I promise you. I'm just adding a few more darker details to the beard. There we go. Okay, I'm done. Uh, back up to the hat. Let's do the hat. Yay. So if you have a small brush for these details, this would be the ideal time to use a really tiny brush. Um, if you want to go down to like a size one or two, because that will give you more control. I'm just going to use this size four here and just really try to be up on the tip of the brush. All right. So in this section, you can kind of make any design or patterns that you want. Um, I'm just going to stick with, and, and designs or patterns should be simple, simple shapes, just repeated to make something that looks more complex. So dots, zigzags, the most complicated thing I have in these are, are some hearts, which I, I do like, I guess the snowflakes look a little complicated, but they're really not. So I'm just going to put in another kind of very thin red stripe. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to shake the camera. And then above or below that, I'm gonna do some type of pattern. This one, I'm actually just gonna do kind of these little lines, these toothy lines. I'm just making stuff up right now. But I wanted to do something different than what I did before. And then between those, I'm gonna put a dot or a circle And then let's see, um, on coming up on the opposite side, I could add something. So I'm going to put those same kind of toothy lines, but in line with the dots or the circles. I don't know if I'll love this. But it's giving, you know, this is kind of looks like stitching of some kind. Okay. So those are in, actually, I like that. That looks fun. Okay. So above the line, what are we going to do? I'm going to put in those hearts again. I really like the heart shape. I do. Welcome. If you're just joining us now, we're painting this lovely little gnome. I saw the numbers just go up quite a few people. So welcome. Feel free to pop a hello in the comments or where you're from if you'd like. And if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask. If you're watching this video after the fact, you can definitely check the description for a list of supplies and materials, but I usually don't get to add those till after the live session is over. We did in the very beginning go over drawing our gnome and now we're just about finished painting. We're adding in some details to the hat and we're gonna end with some bleed proof white on the other sections. So these hearts, I didn't draw anything in. I just painted freehand. You could certainly draw things in ahead of time, but I kind of like the messy crafty nature of it. All right, um, I have one other white section that I could paint in. I'm gonna just do I'm going to just do circles, dots. You could do diamond shapes, clover shapes, all kinds of different things. From Madrid, Selma, hello, welcome, is coming in from Madrid. It's great to see you as well. All right, so let's get to our white, bleed proof white. Oh, hold on. I don't clean my top off very well when I close it, so it gets stuck. Here's our bleed proof white. I'm gonna put a little bit of it. I just dropped the cap under my table, of course. I'm gonna clean this section out.
And we are going to get our bleed proof white going. I'm just going to pull some out. You don't even have to pull it out into your palette if you don't want to, but I like to add a little bit of water, thin it out just a little bit. Otherwise I find it a little tough to work with. So we are going to come down here and I'm going to do a zigzag just under like a little toothy zigzag pattern just under where the other white section starts. And then let's see, you could do, I'm not going to do more hearts. What other shape could I add here? Well, I'm going to add diamonds. Actually, I'm going to add circles first, but bigger ones. And I do try like with my pattern, I'm trying to follow somewhat of the curve of the hat. So you can see like this one is a little lower than this one. It kind of curves a little bit with the hat. So I'm gonna do larger circles and then in between that, I'm gonna do diamonds. But I'm definitely gonna have to connect them somehow with some other smaller element. So let's get the diamonds finished first. Oh, this diamond got really wonky. And again, you can, if you really want to, if it's easier for you to like draw something like this on first, you definitely can. You can't really erase though. So it's basically the same, but sometimes it helps to have, you have a little more control with a pencil or your hand and you can get the shape in and then it's easier just to paint it in. All right, so now I have this diamond pattern and this circle pattern, but it needs something smaller between it. So we're gonna put these little, little dots between. Like an argyle thing going on. And then I'm gonna put another thin line down here. And we're gonna do some of these little stitch patterns again, repeat something from up above. And up in this other section here, I'm going to just do two thin lines with, we'll just do circles again, keep it simple. And sometimes people are like, oh, I got to do everything has to be different. But sometimes just repeating the same three elements over and over again in different ways can really make it look fun and complicated. So that looks like a very complicated pattern. But all it is, is a whole bunch of really simple things together. I'm gonna put another stitch on the other side of this between, just to fill in this space a little. And then we're gonna do one last row of dots at the bottom. And then we're gonna call it a day. We're gonna take a look at our gnome. What do you guys think of this guy? I think he looks super handsome. So you can vary the color of your hat. You can vary your patterns and make this your own for sure. All right, so additional steps that could be done, um, but that don't need to be done. One, I added a little smile on these guys. I think it's cute. It's very cutesy and illustrative for sure. Um, you could go back in and add more. The biggest thing I would do is add more layers onto the nose to make that a little bit more contrasty on the edges. So I would do definitely kind of another layer around this section and under where it's going to be in shadow under the hat. I'm gonna take some Payne's gray. Felt like that was the one area that was lacking the most kind of depth and contrast. That could have had a little more there. I'm a little happier with that now. And you can even darken kind of
kind of the beard right under the nose too, even one more time. But overall, I think he looks great. I hope you enjoyed following along with me. I hope you give this one a try. If you followed live, now are inspired to go pull out your paints and paint this handsome fella, then my job here is done. All right, so thank you all for joining me. Um, I love meeting a lot of new friends, seeing a lot of old friends in the comments here. Thank you so much um, for joining me. Don't forget to come back later or if you're not watching this live to check the description for links to supplies and materials. I will put those in right after um, this uploads for future viewers and also uh, links to Studio Crew Classroom as well as social media if you want to follow, follow me on social media so i'm so glad to see a bunch of you are going to definitely give this one a try thank you so much for watching and supporting me as an artist i hope you all have a wonderful winter and holiday season and a fabulous new year um and thank you again for painting with me all right y'all take care